Hey everybody, Josh Aravinerd here on a day so cold it hurts my face. I figured, wow, what a perfect time to talk about solar stuff on campers, specifically the new Ember Max solar package. So every Ember RV comes with some level of solar, but they also have this optional thing called Max Solar. And what I want to do here today is go side by side between the standard solar, the Max Solar, show you what you're getting. We're going to get in some costs, and I'm also going to help. I think set expectations of exactly what this can do for you and what it can't do for you. All right, so to begin with, every single ember comes with a 190 watt standard roof solar package. And this is going to be an excellent battery tender right here. This is also something if you're gonna be running uh, lights and fans, it should be able to keep up with those pretty easily. This RV does have a 12 volt fridge, which depending on the kind of uh, weather exposure you're looking at, could potentially overpower that panel if boondocking and dry camping uh, is your preference. That's where the Max Solar comes in. But when we step up to Max Solar, we get triple the power. I feel like Tim the Toolman Taylor. Oh, oh, oh. You know, <laughs> more power. Uh, what was the name of his? I mean, it was tool time. What was the, the name of the tools? Be Be Bedford? Doesn't matter. Sorry, I have those squirrel moments. What we're looking at here is now 570 watts juice coming into the RV. Now, what you can run with this, what you can do with it, how long they can run all that stuff, hang with me a little bit. Now, cover all that after we look at all the equipment. Now, managing those panels up top, you've got your charge controller. In a standard Ember, you have a 30 amp PWM controller. It has a, uh, a Bluetooth function, so uh, if you want to get the free app from GoPower, be able to sync to this thing, be able to kind of monitor uh, a little bit remotely, well, remotely around your campsite since it's Bluetooth, it's local, uh, you can do that. But when we go to the Max Solar Package, you actually upgrade to a uh, MPPT controller. Um, and if PWM MPPT doesn't mean much, you, and admittedly, I'm still learning more about this. I'm uh, learning my solar stuff as I go along the way. What this basically means in English, it's a more expensive controller, but it's also a little bit more effective, efficient controller. It tends to capture and, and convert more of the sun's magic into lightning and the batteries there basically is the simplest way i can describe it um that is even remotely vaguely accurate um this also has that uh kind of bluetooth sort of function what you may also notice on this too is it has uh more diagnostics available on the screen meaning it just can give you more information at the same time now in the docking center of the standard embers we have a uh inverter remote activation switch for the factory standard 1000 watt inverter. Um, it is enough to be able to like run household outlets, but it's not going to do the real heavy lifting stuff like running an air conditioner or a microwave, big power appliances. It's good for like little light duty things like, eh, like a fan or something like that. Now, interestingly, when we come over to Max Solar Ember, you notice how that little switch is missing. It's not because the inverter is missing, it's the whole system chains, uh, changes up. And we will come back to the uh, inverter on the Max Solar in just a minute. We have to kind of touch on a few other things first. And that stuff is all like pretty visual, pretty obvious, you can see it. What I want to spend the majority of time talking about are the things you can't see and then what they can do for you. Um, in these Ember Overlands, under the, uh, the sofa up front here, you're going to actually notice how the floor recesses down almost like a storage tub. And by default, that's kind of exactly how I look at it. It's a place for storage. But when you go to the Max Solar package, that space gets repurposed. That being said, with the Max Solar, it's not exactly obvious what's happening down here. Because there's some expensive things, they actually panel that off to make sure someone doesn't accidentally try to shove cargo down there with some very expensive electrical equipment. Thankfully, it's just two Phillips head screws. And um, <laughs> if an idiot like me with tools can manage to do it, so can you. Get that out of there, and then here we are. Obviously, the space has been repurposed a little bit. So what are we looking at down here? We'll come back to the big green box in just a second. You can only really easily see uh, two of them right here, uh, or one of them, rather. There are, with the uh, Max Solar Package, it comes by default with two, count them, two Battleborn Lithium uh, Phosphate Batteries each uh, holding a, a fairly impressive 100 uh, amp hours of juice. Now, a couple neat little details on this. Um, uh, if you're familiar like with the uh, the Keystone big top tier, like 600, 1200 Solar Flex packages, they have a uh, brand of battery called um, Dragonfly. Dragonfly is the parent company. When uh, they sell their batteries to a, a builder like uh, Keystone or something like that, they use the name Dragonfly. When it's sold to the consumer public uh, like you and me, 
uh, they use the name Battleborn. It's the same battery, it's the same technology. One of the really cool things about these, by the way, is like lithium batteries don't do very well in the cold, and you may notice uh, it's a little cold right now. These batteries have their own internal heating system where if it does get cold, they will basically start to warm themselves a little bit to just above freezing so they don't have any uh, major kind of issues or anything like that. Another thing I really like about Battleborns is they, um, when it says 100 amp hours, that means it's like got a usable 100 amp hours effectively. The actual battery, I think, is it, it's something like 103 or 104 amp hours or something like that. So the little bit of inefficiency or unusable portion there they don't broadcast that that's an interesting thing that's out there not, like not everybody does that with lithium batteries like there uh there's there's brands out there who claim to have 100 amp hours but each battery only has 80 amp hours of available juice so it's like anything you really got to spend a lot of time learning about this stuff and i'm still learning about it it makes my head spin the stuff it seems like magic and science fiction all rolled into one but you may also notice how there's uh some empty space down in there still that is because uh the the max solar package by default comes with two of the battleborns you can then a la carte on one or two additional straight from Ember, or we could also get them through our parts and service department here since we handle those as well. So this is what we're looking at is I guess what you call minimum max solar. <laughs> if uh, that makes any kind of sense, I'm not sure it does, but it also feels like it does at the same time, neither here nor there. Back to this big green thing. It almost looks like a miniature Onan generator with that color package, but that is not what this is. This is a combination 3000 watt hybrid smart inverter and charging system and i tell you what the more i've learned about this the happier i am to see this because this is not the least expensive one of these things that i've seen when i look around but it does a couple things very very differently that uh, i i think you're really going to like but thankfully <laughs> you don't have to like tear apart the sofa and rip you know like remove paneling every time you want to get into something because the uh the controls for your uh some of your max solar stuff like that inverter are right down here two things these are not present on the the standard uh series ember overlands but on max solar first of all on the right hand side here you have your handy battery monitor and i like a couple things about it first of all i really enjoy the fact that it gives me a visual display of like roughly you know how much juice is left in my battery secondly the percentage is nice but my favorite thing is actually what it does in the bottom right hand corner you see that 31w right there well what that's telling us is probably the number one thing you really want to know is with the juice i am currently pulling off this system how much time do i have until my batteries go dead now 31 weeks obviously i've got nothing running in the rv um, but, you know, you can also obviously disconnect the system uh, so that you're not draining the batteries when it's not in use. Because one thing to remember, uh, a lot of these have, uh, I'm, I'm in reverse mirror mode here, so left is right, right is left, up and down, and then my whole world is a lie. But they have a little mini fridge out here that is connected to that inverter. Uh, that's one of the cool things about the Embers is they made sure that the outside refrigerator uh, can still run, like when you're in transit or off grid. Naturally, that pulls off the battery though. So when the RV's in storage, you want to make sure that's you know not going to suck your batteries dry. It is also important to remember, even when everything is flat, hard, disconnected, every battery, regardless of type, has a uh, a passive dispersion rate. Um, these are things you can Google easily, depending on the batteries you have. Like if the battery just sits there on a shelf, not hooked up to anything. How much juice does it lose per month? What's that other box though? Well, that is the new uh, like remote inverter switch and like panel and control panel here. What's kind of cool about this, you can just, uh, you know, like right now it's saying it's inverting. That means that it is basically creating household power off of the batteries uh, to supply into the RV, not only to just all the outlets, but even those bigger, higher power things, like you see the display is active on the microwave. That requires 110 household power or the uh, air conditioner up here. Now, that being said, I'm not exactly enjoying being blasted in the face with cold air on a cold day. I'm gonna shut that off. And, and finally, the, uh, the, the idea of the hybrid and smart inverter. These are technically two different things, but they really work hand in hand. So what hybrid inverters do for us is like this is a 30 amp rv but let's say you're going to do some mooch stocking where you're at a friend or family's house or you only have uh lower power like your rv requires 30 amps like this 
but you've only got 15 available. What a hybrid inverter will do is it will say, ooh, goody, give me all 15 amps of that sh uh, shore power that you can. I will take off the battery only what I need to help give the RV the rest of the power it needs for its current load demand. So you're not fully pulling off the batteries. And in those times where you're not uh, actually exceeding the demands of that 15 amp service, um, that means that you'll be charging the batteries, which is excellent. It's a great little kind of tether you know it's a lightweight tether where you don't have to be fully plugged into like full park power or have a generator but at the same time uh, you know you're not exclusively running off batteries also where that is handy is like if you are mooch docking and you are only plugged into that smaller 15 amp plug or, or like a household plug like you plug your your alarm clock in at home Do, I don't even use an alarm clock does anybody even use alarm clocks anymore sorry sorry I, uh, anyway uh, but if you want to run that big microwave or something like that, you don't want to go flipping breakers or the air conditioner, you could do that off the plug, still pulling off your batteries a little bit to maybe get through the hottest parts of the day. Then overnight, um, even though you don't have sun coming in, because the sun is also still charging it the entire time, um, it will, uh, you know, supplement, it'll do whatever you need to do. I think you get the idea. Now, how is that different from smart inversion? And certainly the two things are very related again though not identical so what a smart inverter is going to do the way that this is wired into this rv because basically for, for lack of a better way to say this it's effectively like wired in through the shore power system um the way that they've done this so that it can actively monitor power coming in from outside you don't have to stop and turn it on and off so let's say it was just a hybrid inverter and uh, you plug in that 15 amp power. You have to, uh, on just a plain hybrid inverter, have to go over and turn on the hybrid inverter to get it to do its job. Not that it's hard, um, but if you're ever away from your campsite or something like that, and you had a power loss, if the system went down, you'd then have to walk over and like manually turn the inverter on to get things running. Uh, or if you're basically, if you're going to change power sources, you have to tell the inverter what the power coming in is. A smart inverter looks for you. And it goes, no sweat, I got this. I can see that I have shore power coming in or I can see that I don't have shore power coming in or hey, man, I see you just lost shore power and I need to give you some extra battery juice or vice versa. Or like, you know, if the power comes back when you're already plugged in, you don't ever have to go pushing a button to mess with anything. The RV will continue to function in its last state with effectively no break in service. So that's all well and good. Now we understand what it can do but like, what is the real world expectation of like, what are you actually going to get out of this thing? Because the impression I don't want to give you is, hey guys, you can go get one of them here trailers from us and you can park it in the middle of Timbuktu and do whatever you want with it as much as you want with it. I don't, that it, not, it's not even, I don't think it's going to happen. That's not going to happen. Um, so let's say you have modest, sun coverage, like 50% sun coming in, for lack of a better way to say it. You've got some sun, it's the middle of the day, but maybe you're under half a tree or something like that. Uh, you kick on that air conditioner. With the two batteries that we have on this, I'm shooting from the hip here, that might get you three to six hours of air function, depending on exactly how hard you're running it, depending on humidity, heat, sun coverage, depending on a lot of things. So it's the kind of system that can get you through the worst hottest parts of the day or uh you know you could you could run your furnace uh pretty hard uh for several hours overnight and then as long as you're not out also really hard running the air conditioner or something the next day if you have sun coverage coming in uh you could uh largely replenish those batteries with the max solar package it is not it is not it is not an indefinite camp package I want to make that painfully clear. It is an extended dry camp package. But remember when I talked about mooch docking when you're plugged into your friend's house? I think that's where this thing is. Let's say, like my parents. My parents have a big giant fifth wheel down in Florida. Uh, they own an Ember 191 MDB. The idea behind this is if they wanted to bounce around to different locations and not always know exactly what kind of power is going to be available just have like a quick weekend trip instead of hauling an entire 40 foot fifth wheel around they could have this little 22 and a half foot guy behind him on a half ton handling it just fine and be able to go and park 
pretty much anywhere they want and do pretty much anything they want uh, within reason for a weekend or something like that. I think it's a great extended dry camp package. If you want to indefinitely off-grid, you're still probably going to want something like a portable inverter generator to help get you through the lean times or the like days like to this where it's there's some sun coming in but it's overcast you're not getting awesome coverage things like that um but if you're gonna do the uh, i'm gonna go visit family i might park camp a little i might dry camp a little for a weekend here or there it's an absolutely awesome package but if you are super serious about spending a long time off grid and you want to have tons of battery power on this thing a uh, couple things first of all remember up in that front compartment there, there's room for two additional batteries, whether you get them from the factory, whether you get them from us, we can do that. Also remember, uh, these RVs still have a portable uh, like panel plug over here where you can have your portable panels cord up through here in the docking center with the door closed and uh, be able to kind of chase the sun a little bit. Uh, very handy if you're going to be, you know, again, where there's some uh, tree coverage or something like that, where the roof panels don't get maximum effect. Now, normally with the gearbox that's available on the front of these embers, in here is where you would find your battery connections. But notice with the Max Solar, they actually get routed inside the RV. Now, I am not an electrician. I don't ever recommend messing with factory systems, but there are people out there that have the knowledge and the know-how. If you wanted to add a couple batteries in that front compartment, you could probably stuff another, I'm shooting from the hip, but maybe another four batteries for those uh, Battleborns up here or the, the lithium battery of your choice as long as they're compatible with one another. And uh, I, I mean, you could load this thing up. But remember everybody, Every pound of stuff you add into this RV takes one pound of cargo capacity away from all the stuff that you could put into this. So especially if you're going to be dry camping, uh, you want to uh, have some water in the tanks or something like that. Be really conscious of the push and pull give and take so that you're not overloading, overweighting anything. Now the big question, how much is this going to cost me? Um, you may notice in a lot of my videos, I don't uh, state pricing in the videos because pricing is something that changes it's variable and it's dynamic and our videos live a long time and uh, you know a video from two years ago the pricing on that doesn't apply to today's stuff but I want to give you some baseline info on this and what I really want to recommend and caution here is to understand verify anything that I'm going to say and this is just a general idea right now um, if you are interested in this package or getting an ember or having one built or whatever, always, always at that time, contact our team. We can get you a current copy of like the, the sheets and what's available and get you the costs off of those. So all that cautionary stuff said at the time of this recording, and once again, it can and will change in time. But at the time of this recording, the minimum max solar package that we're looking at here with the two factory uh, Battleborns is probably going to run around 5,000 to 5,500. Each of those additional Battleborns that you decide uh, if you wanna to add to this would be around 1,000 to $1,100. And again, that's the cost on those is pretty consistent whether you're getting them from Ember or from our dealership here. So if, uh, and, and just like this, we will have max solar units in stock. We will probably bring them in with minimum, maximum solar, as dumb as that sounds, that's the best way I can think to describe it. If you have a better way to say that, let me know, please. Um, <laughs> and we can always a la carte those things for you as needed. You let us know, we can get you all one quote, we can send it to the bank for all one money, whatever works for you, all, sorry, all one money. That is, a, uh, that is a phrase that my dad likes to use. He goes, yep, I'll get it wrapped up for you, all one money. Because he doesn't care what money it is, it all ends up being one money all in the bank. <laughs> and he's gonna, he's gonna be like, ah, Got you, son. I got you saying it. I don't know if I've ever said that phrase before in my life, and every time he says it, my eyes roll because it's, you know, your dad says stuff and your eyes roll. But it happened. Good job, dad. I finally said it. <laughs> so I hope you appreciate uh, the, the time that we took here today to get you this information because these are new, they're exciting, there's a lot of questions on them. And I don't still have all the answers on everything, Ember, yet, but we're getting a little bit closer here every day. And again, I will want thousand percent acknowledge I am um, I, I would still say probably just a novice when it comes to solar stuff there's a lot to learn amperage wattage wiring gauges and things like that I am still learning those things 
Sometimes, as a result of my lack of knowledge on these things, I may state something potentially incorrectly, unintentionally, understand. Uh, I've never attempted to ever intentionally mislead anybody. That's why I want to set some real world stuff here, you know, like letting you know, this ain't gonna run the air conditioner indefinitely, uh, you know, when you're parked in the middle of the woods or something like that. If I've said something wrong, please share a comment. Um, help everybody else out. My goal is to get good, accurate information out there, not confusing stuff. Um, if uh, you have any other questions, let our team know. Let me know what you think about this. This is roughly on par with like the Keystone Solar Flex uh, 600 system. It's very, very similar. They each do a couple little things the other doesn't. Um, and, but uh, overall, it's, it's very exciting to me to see the advancement of solar stuff in the RV industry. And I do think that we're still uh, several years away from having an effective, affordable, like totally 12 volt all off grid RV. Like those systems theoretically do exist, but they're still to the point that a lot of the consumer market, even though we like the ideas of those things, I don't know that we're all ready to, to dive into the cost of those, but as this technology advances, I think those things will become more and more accessible. And again, um, let me know what you think. If there's something I've missed, something I got wrong, something else you need, let us know. We're here to take care of you. So as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button real quick. If you have nothing to add, at least click the like button. And short of that, when you're ready, we're ready and we'd love to work with you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.